Welcome to another episode of the Coffee Roaster Warm Up Sessions podcast. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Black Friday. Yeah, it all happened. What's, <laughs> what's, what's another holiday? There's got to be another holiday this weekend, no? No, nothing this week. It's nothing this weekend. Well, happy Thanksgiving, folks. Yeah. Hopefully it was a it was a delightful experience. Yeah. Hopefully the turkey was roasted well. Roasted? Right. No, you don't roast turkey? Um, I mean, I guess part of the process or in you, the oven. You sizzle it? Something like that. Cook Did you buy anything bacon. on Black Friday? Dude, I didn't buy anything on Black Friday. I was going to. I think I'm still going to. Um, there's one thing I will. And it's not because I actually. <clears throat> first off, I think speaking of Black Friday, it was trash. It was the worst it's ever been. And it makes sense. It's inflation. The world's coming to an end. <laughs> Why are businesses going to give out free discounts? I don't know. <laughs> um, it's horrible out there. Have you checked the, any of those? No, I thought I got the best ads I've ever gotten. Look, I literally, I thought had, like, I got the worst ads. I got the best ads. I was like almost purchasing like 10 things last night. I, I was hoping somebody would send me a good ad. I was uh, like, I have money to spend. Just please tell me. Give me a reason. And all I got was really bad ads discounts on like ten dollars i'm like dude this is not this is the, the incentive is small here dude, i got good ads i almost bought some underwear oh nice great <laughs> great <laughs> discounts yeah. yeah no ads were great i was actually terrified at how good the ads were wow yeah they were just too good it's i literally had i already filled in the address put in my payment information on a lot of things and then stopped you love checkout yeah, dude, be prepared. They're gonna send you an email. Check. I hope they send me an email with another <laughs> discount code. That's the pro. That's the thing. It's like on top of the Black Friday, I want like another discount code. I want. I really want a Kraken jersey. I'm going to a Kraken game in a, next week. Whoa, yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, I need to check. Make sure we're not roasting. Oh boy, but yeah, a lot, I did buy one thing. I finally went through with one thing. I bought a baseball hat for sixteen dollars. That's I always got to buy another hat. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Most of the stuff I saw was just like literally $10 off or buy 10, get one free. I'm like, sorry, <laughs> I can't buy 10 of these. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I know I get the I know I get the 11th one for free, but it's just not. It's like a punch card. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> Your 10th bagel is on us. What is this, a reward system or what? <laughs> Cash out now. <laughs> Not sure who's being rewarded <laughs> this Black Friday. You or me? <laughs> it's horrible. Damn. Wow. Wow. Or like the scam I saw. Though the crazy thing is like nowadays, like the whole month's Black Friday. Like there's Black yeah. Friday ads that were coming at me like three weeks ago. Like, hey, wow. get your sales in early. You know? <laughs> and I'm like, guys, come on. What is this capitalism? Or... <laughs> <laughs> it's just, just horrible. Anyways. Friends, we're not on here to complain about Black Friday. Let's pour some batchy. Yeah, Let's get this. Actually, sir, you do the honors. I can't yeah. pour batch. Careful, the spout's a little aggressive. By the way, uh, that thing that Max let me borrow that I brewed batch brew on. Yeah, I'm so f I'm so fascinated by that thing. I need to brew more. Dude. It was like very nice brews. I liked it. Sergi makeshift got a, got a, what is the, it's called an eight cup brewer. Where, where was the first time you seen Eight cup it? pour over brewer. What Instagram I account? Give a shout out to the Instagram account. Dude, that a shout out to you. you shout out to you. 180 gram coffee. Yes. That's exactly. Uh, that's, Zach. That's Zach. Yeah. I, that's where I first saw it. And I was like, this is very interesting. I don't know what to think. I don't know why I'd brew a massive pour over like that, but it's intriguing. It's beautiful. It's it's something it's something different i gotta say i think i believe according to my two brews it tastes better than a chemex so i need to do did you make research. a pour over with it or did you use it as a basket <laughs> for your drip got for your bad well, brewer that is a pour over water is pouring <laughs> out <laughs> sergi took out the ratio carafe and replaced it with the the ceramic giant eight cup pour over brewer yeah. and threw it in there yeah, that's I mean, what a it, batch it, brewer does. it tasted good. Yeah, it was. I mean, for Thanksgiving, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Mark is busting out his accent. I know. <laughs> Thanksgiving. <laughs> this is like Thanksgiving afternoon, evening, and I'm just. I literally almost passed out on the couch. I rested with a nice little 
mug of decaf right on my right on my belly, bloated, and was nodding, snoozing away. So yeah, it's great. The the decaf to end up tasting great. Yeah. I actually like it a lot. No. It tastes a little too dark. This is actually, in my opinion, it's pretty, it's pretty tasty. It tastes straight up like oranges, almost like yeah. orange sor- sorbet. Is that the right word? I mean, I don't know orange. if it's that creamy. It's, it's nice. It's like sweet and, yeah. and has pleasant acidity. Mm-hmm. It's just like, it's juicy. Um, it's it's nice. I'm not getting as much of the the jammy that's caramely what, that, that's, stuff. Yeah, I'm not getting. Yeah, but that's the, what I was thinking. It's a sweet, sweet orange. Yeah. Maybe it's a slightly over extracted. Maybe you should have uh, actually did twelve like we were supposed what, to. What was your uh, dose? Fifty? Eight hundred? No, it was just under 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 fifty. Like uh, forty eight seven. Oh. Eight hundred grams of water. Seven twenty. It shouldn't create that much of a difference, but maybe it no. did. It's medium. It's okay. It, I, I because I, I love this coffee so much, I got to yeah. say that I know on pour over, this coffee just shines. So. I, I love this coffee, honestly. I, I've never, I don't think I've ever had a bad experience with this coffee. <laughs> like ever since we've, this is the Burundi for all of you wondering. Yep. Uh, the Burundi Natural Kayanza. It's, it's just so good, man. Like. Honestly, I think and this is a con- might be controversial. This walks over most of the Ethiopian naturals that 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 are mm-hmm. out there. I yeah. Well, that's because according to your taste preference, this is leans closer towards like a washed flavor profile. Of course, this is according to my taste yeah. preference. Of course, of course, everybody listening to this would disagree with me. This doesn't taste that's like fine. blueberries. No, which if you're looking for an Ethiopia natural and you're talking right, you about would hate that, this. Yeah, yeah, it tastes a lot like a wash coffee with like slightly uh, jammier mouthfeel mm-hmm. and then way more su- well, not way more sweetness, but a different style of sweetness. Yeah, yeah. but I like it, dude. Yeah. Honestly, oh, man, I I rave about this coffee all the time on the pod, mm-hmm. so it's almost probably Nothing annoying new. to rave about it uh, all over but i will say um it cools like well, like with a little stone fruit flavor yeah of course yeah of course um i will say we have some i know i keep saying this all the time but i think it's worth noting because i'm excited for it we have a lot of really fun coffees on the way yeah. we're cupping regularly doing some test batch roasting um labels our our whole packaging is on home stretch, you guys. Mm-hmm. I've never. Um, I feel anxious. I feel suspenseful, but I'm also feel so relieved that we're on literally home stretch. A little, actually, way later than I expected, but we ran into some yeah. speed bumps, and we'll, we'll all break this down in a separate podcast. Yeah. But wow, am I ready to to launch? And you know, release some of the all the all the new stuff that we've been yeah. working on behind the scenes. So it's exciting. Stay tuned. Yeah. We have some tasty Colombians, Guatemalans, Ethiopians. What else do we have? Decaf is still yeah. staying there. If you need a decaf, it's slaps. Yeah, it's I don't know. Yep. Yeah, solid. Yeah. We also are revamping our new box. So I would say everyone be on the lookout for that. The box is going to be uh, straight fire. Not the whole experience, not, a, not just the experience <laughs> of, opening that box and getting your coffee but there's a possibility of there's stuff in the box that's different than our other box yeah um so st- it, good stuff's coming new five pound bags yeah. for a cafe who needs a flashy bag on your shelf there's going to be literally some reflective material on or there. for for home well for home yeah, you want like yeah, five yeah, pounds yeah, worth yeah. of espresso you're that's just crushing through yeah. Yeah. um it's really good. Yeah, so, sure, sure. Lot, lot, lots of good stuff coming. But anyways, that being said, um, Serge, what's your what's your all time go to podcast? Oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I was thinking about like when, what was the first podcast I ever listened to? Wait, up, before we even go there, if you haven't voted on Spreggy, oh, guys, sure. go nominate us. 
throwing our yeah. names throw our names in the in the basket in the hat mm-hmm. um it would mean a lot to us yeah. it would be it would 100%. be actually a huge honor i'd be very humbled if we got nominated but anyways that being said yeah the first podcast you ever listened to yeah i'm, I'm thinking like my go-to and my first will probably have like a really good cross cross uh, crossing point there um but as cheesy as this sounds i used to listen to the relevant podcast i think one of the first podcasts i listened to and i still do um they're like 1019th episode to this day like i listen to that podcast a lot um but honestly man it's been i think it's been close to t- uh, i can remember the first podcast i listened to was 2014 i think eight years how long have podcasts been even around for a long time yeah but they were pretty quiet for a long time yeah. like nobody like that it it was almost i think honestly for a long time to listen to a podcast back then was like if somebody listened to the radio today right yeah <laughs> you just it, well you that, turn that on was the part, 790 yeah. kgmi <laughs> Ninety-five point three. I don't know. Night with what's what's a late night show with? Yeah, yeah. Wanda, Rhonda. Or, yeah, yeah, like yeah. That. It's, it's great. like a Q and A. It's yeah. like a Q and A. Like there's Collins. always yeah, Collins. Like always at like twelve p. Twelve like at midnight or one a.m. There's always like alien conspiracy theorists. Like, <laughs> dude, you guys, I got abducted by aliens. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's like, all of a sudden his phone starts to break up, yeah. and you're like, oh god. <laughs> It's happening. <laughs> totally. I mean, speaking of that, that's when like, you know, true crime podcasts went up hard. When? Um, I think like within that kind of genre of like stories about aliens and stuff like that, I feel like in that area is where I remember like true crime podcasts like going off and then TV shows following those podcasts. Mm-hmm. There's so many TV shows now based on podcasts, which is wild. That's crazy. Me. Yeah. You know, that's I mean? crazy. Um, Gosh, another podcast that I I remember it's a long time ago. One of the first podcasts that were not just information, like you know, mm-hmm. list, or like reading a uh, nonfiction book versus a fiction book. Mm-hmm. Um, like I listened to a lot of quote unquote nonfiction podcasts, and then I listened to one which was like high end storytelling production on a podcast. It was called Blackout. That was a while back. Because I had one of my favorite actors, a voice actor in that show, which at that point, now now this is pretty normal, but at that point to have a podcast that is like hired out actors, has a production, like high production level was very, very new. I feel like now it's more common, you know, Mm -hmm. people are investing a lot, but then there's also a lot of simplicity in podcasts, like what we do now. It's not like the highest level of production, but you can get pretty good quality stuff, you know. Yeah. So that was Blackout was like a basically like a TV show about audio show that I listen to a lot. I still do sometimes. That's crazy. Yeah. I I've never listened to an episode. I uh, like a rare. Uh, I don't even know. I d- I don't I don't really understand those podcasts to be honest. I don't understand like true crime podcasts or like. I just don't. I did. I don't suspenseful. understand. They're exciting. I, I like I, them. I don't even know. Yeah. I, I, ju- I just don't understand. I, it's, it's like a mis- it's telling. it's a mystery of its own for me. <laughs> <laughs> like like I'm not trying to figure out who's dead. I'm no. trying to figure out why these things are <laughs> why popular. <I'm> listening. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like I don't know. Like I it's it. It's just I'm I'm bewildered. I and of course I'm I mean I'm more of like I just love to listen to like just information. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. that's like mm-hmm. to me podcast is like is like just soaking information from a book. Um and getting into like almost like I'm a third, you know, person. Yeah. Um like a fly on the wall on a conversation yep. of, you know, some smart people yeah. people who are way more smarter and successful yeah. than me that's kind of that's kind of my approach to podcasts yeah. but i i just i don't understand these storytelling yeah no no i think they're entertaining they, they have a place um 
There's another well, they're, they're far uh, radio from lab. Entertaining. You've oh, never, Radio Lab is great. They, that's right. That's it's a right. Documentary I've, story. I've listened to one radio, yeah. actually, like for Radio Lab. I will say that was the first time after listening to that. I was like, "Oh, podcasts can actually be like it was." It was. I was so bewildered that a yeah. podcast can both sound that good, like they have like sound effects going yeah. on while they're storytelling, yeah. and it's both like. Well, and this is where I understand Radio Lab more than any of the other ones, yeah. is that it's like it's informational. Mm-hmm. They're actually sharing legit information, and it's like um, they're discussing a topic, yeah. but it's done through like this journalistic documentary style, which is absolutely insane. That was the first time I listened to it, and I was like, "Dang, po- like podcasts could be very like the creativity yeah. on them is so much more than yeah. what I'm used to listening." Yeah, to. Yeah, podcasts like Radio Lab, like my imagination goes nuts. I feel like I'm there. Like, yeah. I feel like I'm daydreaming when I'm listening to that podcast um, because just the production level is so great. I think within that uh, area, I would say Vox has a different podcast. Um, Vox is still considered like a news outlet, of course, but they do things like, uh, I love the one like Vox Unexplained. You and I have been talking about space travel a lot. So they're doing a lot of on NASA's uh exploration of what it would take to land and live on the moon and then go to Mars and inhabit Mars or not technically live on the moon, but inhabit like more than just take a couple of steps. Um, so st- stuff like that, that was like super interesting, but the production level on that is like the cuts, the different interviews, the yeah. sound effects and be just <clears throat> excellent. Like I love it. I just listened to one on Maradona on Vox. That's powerful. And Shout it was out to like, Maradona. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> speaking <laughs> of, like, oh, speaking of Maradona, we got the World Cup in, yes. um, in full swing, and it's like throwing all kinds of curveballs, but That's go cool. Argentina for yeah. days. It's a good game today, USA versus England, too. Uh, zero, 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 zero. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, speaking of that sports podcast, I do listen to some uh, about hockey, just the NHL one. It kind of gives a brief overview of like what's happening, stats and players, interviews. Is it like an individual it. just talking about it, or is no, it like it's like a there's a couple of hosts. Don yeah. Cherry? No, no Don <laughs> Cherry. Don Cherry's been canceled a long time ago. <laughs> Who knows where he is? <laughs> yeah. So if you're remotely Canadian, you know Don. You know what talking about <laughs> CBC. Yeah. Uh, Hockey night in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> Too good. I just the only thing I miss about Don Cherry is his angry impersonations all the time when he's like <laughs> rock him, sock him, hockey. Yeah, <laughs> and then his like ties, like yes. he wore like a cheese tie or like yes. something random. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. But anyways, yeah. That so that's like, is it just like somebody just recapping what's happening, or is it like just like sports commentary? Commentary. Or what? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Like commentary, news, stats, like everything that's happening. Um, within that, like when back in the day, I used to listen to like fantasy football podcasts as well. I was just a lot. Like if there's a topic I'm interested, in, it's like my first thing is like, is there a podcast on it or someone like one of the things, like if I get fascinated with someone in the news or okay, Gary V, right. That was a big one for me. Like one of the first things I did after his YouTube videos is like, okay, what's some audio content I can find from Gary and I that was in the early times where he right now he has a lot of podcasts or a lot of different pieces of Dude. material it's like every topic is its own like podcast Dude, um, he's got he's yeah. got like audio experiences video yeah. experiences commentator experiences exactly. daily yeah. I don't know daily yeah. vlogs I don't know on podcasts it's it's whack yeah. he has a lot of content but yeah I think he's I think if I have uh, consumed if you could put like my consumption on a graph, <laughs> his content that I've consumed is more than anything I've consumed in my life. Yeah, fair enough. Like consistently, yeah. regularly, and the volume is at abs- an absurd amount. Mm-hmm. Um, and because I think, um, uh, and this isn't like a, like a motto to live by, but I'm all I'm very intrigued by. Uh, I think Alex Hermosi once said. Instead of reading like a hundred books once, he actually leans towards the concept of reading five books like 
um, what would that be? So five books, like 20 times. Yeah. Instead of a hundred books once. And so, because she's with the impersonation, like you should take in information and keep taking it in so yeah. you can really solidify yourself mm -hmm. and from jumping from, from one thing to another, which is why I like, I consume so much of his podcast and content like yeah. Gary V's is because I'm like, a lot of this stuff is repeat. Like he says a lot of the same things over and over again, mm -hmm. but it's sometimes the context is slightly different. Sometimes it's, um, he words it a little differently. Yeah. And to me, even though I, I pretty much know what he's going to say, it's the repetition mm -hmm. that keeps it fresh in my mind that actually enables me to apply it very differently in my life. Yeah. So speak, that, so. that makes a lot of sense because if you flip that around um, from like a teaching and speaking perspective, um, they say like you have to, what's the number? Yeah, X amount of times you have to repeat the same thing over and over again mm -hmm. for someone to actually get it. Oh, um, so it makes sense that you would do that to yourself to fully understand the topic you want to hear the same thing over and over again in a different context or from a different perspective, but it's the same thing over and over again. I think that's very healthy. Yeah. I think that's a very good thing. Um, I, I think that's the great thing about podcasts is that they allow you to do that. And you can also um, do that within your lifestyle, like reading a book sometimes. I, I don't know about you, but I haven't moved to audiobooks yet. So podcasts is a version of audiobooks I think audio books are a sin. <laughs> I like, I hate them because I'm like, I'm like, no, you have to, you know, sit down, yes. turn the pages. You got to feel the book. But at the same time, a part of my brain is like, don't you dare try one audio book because I know I'm going to love <laughs> yes, it. Exactly. I don't know. I'll reason. read all the books. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, yeah. I, can't, I can't love myself because once you go there, there's no turning back. Yeah. That's it. You're I, lost. I, think, I think one thing is like to course correct within that is like, man, you got to repent from saying you read a book if you listen to it. Yeah, there's got to be a new. Just word. say you listen to a book. That's or, fine. Or just let's just take that all away. Or there's got to be another verb yeah. for it. Yeah, for sure. I'm I'm down. Let's make it happen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're not really books, or are they? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I listen to a I don't know a speech, yeah. maybe. Some kind of, yeah, yeah. But, I think um, just uh, any any kind of hobby that also like you know turns a conversation towards like coffee as well, like. Uh, before I even worked in coffee, I listened to coffee podcasts. Um, one again, we always talk about the Cat and Cloud podcast. Yeah, that was one of the first ones. Um, the fact that I actually heard about like my boss right now, the owner of Narrative, Maxwell Mooney, I heard about him on a podcast yeah. before Narrative was open. That's crazy. Um, that's a very big yeah. deal. Um, so stuff like that, I think, is also part of my daily consumption when yeah. it comes to podcasts. Speaking of which. I mean, that's pretty insane that like the first time you've heard of your bot, your current boss is through a podcast, which kind of makes him, I don't know if that's what you call f being famous. Yeah. I don't know. I yeah. don't know. I would, yeah. But what do you think, what do you think are some of the things that podcast is doing for culture? Mm. Gosh, I mean, a lot. It is one, it's how a lot of content is being consumed right now. Um, it's a very like... It's not even a social media, right? It's an insane it's a, it's transformation of, of information, of communication. Yeah. yeah, because we're, I think we're so used to, again, um, these visual platforms when it comes to like video content mm -hmm. on TikTok um, and then like uh, visual content on Instagram. And I think another platform that kind of crosses over is like YouTube, right? Because there's a lot, our podcast is on both um, like audio uh, content and video content. Um, so I think what it's done is it's allowed us to like consume more content and, in, and it's more long form. I don't know if you think about the podcasts that you listen to are majority of them short. I, there are short podcasts that I listen to, but what's the majority for you? The amount of time spent listening. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, most of my podcasts are on the longer side. <laughs> um, like the stuff that I've listened from Lex Friedman. Yeah, a couple a stuff one. from Joe Rogan. Um, the, my all-time favorite podcast right now is the All In podcast. Mm -hmm. It's like top twenty in the world. It's insane, but it's sometimes their episodes are an hour and forty minutes. Yeah, and I'll watch the whole thing. It's the yeah. it's one of my favorite things to do. I it's so weird. I never thought I'd say that. Watch people come talk, but yeah. you just watch watch a couple folks. You know, just talk and. Mm -hmm. 
it's so it's so intriguing um and it's so con ju- it's such a big juxtaposition from consuming fast short yeah. form content um and i think there's so many repercussions or maybe not repercussions but so many things that can come from long form information kind of like reading a book yeah. um instead of like uh, you know as opposed to reading a blog post mm-hmm. like it's very different and i think um uh, i don't know i think it's very very crazy that podcasts are such a big thing right now i yeah. think it's i think podcasts are beneficial for the world yeah i know there's probably lots of podcasts you shouldn't be listening to out there yeah um but i think overall it's such a great platform to just learn information it it makes room for great discussions and conversations and uh, just learning. Yeah. I mean, the fact that like you can right now have listen to a conversation with some really successful or some, uh, some really intelligent person or whatever it is, it's insane. Yeah. And someone else to ask the proper questions um, to have that conversation, you know, for because sure. if you, let's say, you know, you met up with Michael Jordan, what would you even ask him? Yeah. But to have yeah. someone else sit across from them and be able to have that dialogue um, is just as important. And I think that's the beauty of podcasts. It's it's not only about the person, the interviewee, it's the interviewer. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. Something like mm-hmm. that, but you get my point. So like Lex Friedman, it's a great example. He has a podcast episode, it's eight hours long. That's um, so like if you met that person, would you be able to hold an eight hour conversation with them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably not. But for Lex to be able to do that, that's a lot of skill. Like yeah. hosting a podcast is actually really hard. I have another podcast that I've worked on and kind of had a, the first season go eight episodes. Yeah, eight episodes and paused it until next year. But it's not it's not as easy as it sounds like to create. Um, good content that has a good flow that there's chemistry Mm -hmm. there's content that people want to consume you know what i mean that's really hard to create so to have that kind of long form content is i think excellent i think it's both very very difficult to be a really great podcast host but on the other hand you know a lot i've talked to a lot of people that have considered starting a podcast or are intrigued by it and i'm like to be honest, all it takes is really your phone. They're like, well, microphone should I buy what? I'm like, dude, yeah. literally put in your AirPods and hit voice memo record and you have a podcast. Literally, yep. it's just that simple. Then you find something to distribute your podcast across across multiple platforms. So it's like this weird dynamic. I mean, like all things, like you could be a very beginner and get it rolling. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you could suck at it <laughs> or yeah. you can be crushing it with you know eight hour episodes and still have them be intriguing to listen to two hours of conversation because yeah. it's that well done um which just i don't know it, it, it makes me think like how crazy over the centuries how maybe that's this not the word the right word but how decentralized maybe information yes. is or how how less how much less gatekeeping there is of information how um decentralized the only thought idea that i can get but i don't think that's the right word but anyways it's this concept of like like information now like i mean if you go back like a thousand years Mm -hmm. like there's only so many people that knew how to read and there's only so many people that were allowed to learn how to read so for you to read a book uh you know, the fact that you could read already was a, an insane privilege. Yep. And that was the source of information. Yeah. The The fact that you can read and write was already a completely, a whole new ball game. But yeah. then, um, and then now today, like literally there's information everywhere. Yeah. You can listen to any pod. There's a podcast probably literally for anything. Yeah. Internet is given a lot of accessibility. I mean, the reality is even if you don't have access to internet, you can go to a library and now libraries have access to internet, you know? So yeah, you can, I, th- I think that's the great thing. I think decentralized may be the right word. I, I would kind of agree with that because it, uh, there is no gatekeeping. So therefore it allows for more free thinking um, instead of group think. And again, that's, yeah. you can take the conversation either way. It could create a lot of room for group thinking as well. If you, you know, collect a bunch of information and create an echo chamber and that's the only 
you know, a podcast you listen to is for your perspective, mm -hmm. but because it opens up room for so much information, mm -hmm. you can always find an opposing view. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> but <laughs> sorry. What's going um, on? <laughs> I don't know. Something got stuck in my throat, but um, like I, I, we, we talked about this thing. I, I'm not a huge uh, Ben Shapiro fan, but the reality is like, his podcast allows for me to be able to uh, wrestle with ideas that are outside of like my common kind mm -hmm. of uh, thought process. You know what I mean? And when Lex Friedman interviewed him, it, it was just like, it was so good and so refreshing to listen to um, mm -hmm. something that I don't commonly listen to from a perspective. And I was like, dude, like, I've always known Ben Shapiro is a genius, but I'm like even more like, oh my gosh, like he's actually like the way he thinks is actually very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so it's super smart. So stuff like that, that I think like podcasting al allows you to do that. And then from a less serious side, like I've been a, you know, a, a sneaker person for a long time. I don't want to mm -hmm. call myself a sneaker head, but now you just type in sneakers into the podcast thing and you have like, tons of podcasts just dedicated to talking about sneakers and i mean you just listen to people talk and for me that consumption kind of brings me um not joy is not the right word but it kind of edifies me mm -hmm. more than just uh scrolling through instagram and just seeing like yeah. the news or the headlines about this new drop of sneakers yeah, yeah, yeah. but hearing folks talk about it use the language that i'm learning I think it also like helps me kind of feel like I'm part of that community. For sure. Yeah, I think sometimes it's not even about necessarily the information. Um, sometimes it's just like how it's said yeah. and by who. Yes. Like, I mean, sometimes I'll listen to stuff that like I know everything about and I know I'm probably not going to learn anything new, but it's the people that say it. Mm -hmm that makes it fun like yeah. and enjoyable to listen to it's almost like you've this is gonna be weird but like you've made a virtual friend yeah like yeah. um like you've known them for a long time yeah. but you've actually never have physically known them um but yeah and then to go back to your point like i think it's like education and information has become it's kind of i don't know if this is the word but deinstitutionalized like um like it's no longer like held back like you said like there's so many so much pieces of information mm -hmm. you can get from any side for any hobby yeah. uh like that's crazy that's yeah. like an insane privilege and honor that we get to live in um but that makes me wonder as we wrap up this podcast do you think that devalues information and education no absolutely not i mean you don't how... think you don't think that the more edu information and knowledge out there that it brings down the value like supply and demand no because there's not a limited amount of information and knowledge what do you mean you can't do there's no limitation to information and knowledge we're always learning something new i mean uh, the episode the vox uh, episode about space is a good example like the as we are discovering and like traversing this new uh space and area like we're learning more about it so therefore we're going to talk about it so there's no information about it. So we're creating more new information. Do you think you can't devalue that? Do you think do you think the fact that we have so much access to knowledge and information that we stop searching for it? Uh, I think the stopping part may may come from this uh, like kind get, of overwhelming getting, numb, getting yeah. numb to information, and you no longer you're like it's like eh. It doesn't matter. I mean, no, because I think there's every person has um, a little bit of like passion towards something they really care about, they want to know about. So, I mean, hobbies, you know, right? It's a good example. Like going back to the sneaker thing, like I never knew those podcasts existed until I realized I'm like, oh, I want to understand this topic more. Let me find some audio content to listen to. So, but before then, I had no idea it even existed until I searched mm -hmm. it. So the amount of information isn't changing whether um, whether I, like I want it or not. It's a matter of me personally searching out like what I want. Does that make sense? I know that's kind of, of course. confusing, but that's kind of like a also a big question. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so. I think that I mean I asked that because I was just I was just thinking about this. Um, 
I've th- thought about this a lot. It, just the fact that like, I'm like, I'm curious, like if there's so much information out there, are people just like becoming numb to the accessibility to it? That it's just become like a norm where you don't value it as much. Um, or on the flip side, like what you said is very, very valid actually. Um, and it may just be that we just become, um, like we just pick and choose what we want to learn yeah. about and we can toss everything else out mm-hmm. the window. Um, and so I don't know, it's kind of, I'm thinking like to like, you know, if there was like only, you know, a hundred books in the world that was written at some point, like everybody wanted to read those 100 books because they held so much value and information. And now you have all the books in the world and you're like, hmm, okay, whatever, yeah. you know, or like, you know, if you, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I th- I think also being smart, that idea of what it means to be smart has changed a lot. Interesting. Because there's such a wide variety of things you can be smart about and there's so much information. Um and instead of being like, "Hey, if you know, you know, math, la- like language arts and history, you're smart because you figured these topics out." Now there you can be a genius about Pokemon, you know what I mean? And be insanely smart yeah. or like the Rubik's cube, because there's so much information about, um, these different little kind of niche ideas. So therefore different kind of genius has arised. Yeah. So I, I think, yeah, I, I think the amount of knowledge that's out there has really changed like who we are as a society and culture and just people in general. Yeah. Nice. Well, cool. Um, yeah. Last question. Would you ever want to be a podcast host? Like just do it for a living? Yeah. I think like Lex fun. or like Joe or. Oh, yeah. I, I it's, it's hard to say like I would want to because I think they're so good at what they do. Like to, it's just interviewing right. if you, people if you, if and if you, having conversations. Like if you if could. If I had all the skill, like, would I do it? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Because like, I mean, you know this, I wanted to go to school for journalism and yeah. that is like a version of yeah, journalism that's, that's true You're yeah. like yeah i would absolutely love to do that It'd be super fun it's glorious well folks um yeah thanks for listening to this episode about podcasting and podcasts in general <laughs> yes. um that being said if you're watching this on youtube drop some of your favorite podcasts down below in the comment section leave us a review go nominate us for a spreadsheet if we earn it maybe we maybe we haven't <laughs> yeah. um leave us a review give us some stars Give us some feedback. Send us a DM, an email. We love connecting with you guys. And um, yeah, thank you so much for listening. Happy Thanksgiving. And we'll see you guys next week. Sheesh. You've been (laughs) podcasting way too long today. We'll see you next week on another episode of the Coffee Roaster Warm Sessions podcast. And remember, as always, reflect what's good.